Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. So good to see you on this fabulous October fall Sunday, the last Sunday of October. When we come back next week, it's going to be November, people. Can you believe that? It's hard to believe. It is. Next Sunday, the time changes. It falls back. Kathy would know that. And uh, so, uh, so make sure you set your clocks before you go to bed Saturday night. The time changes next Sunday, so be ready for that. It's hard to believe that, too, that it's that time of year. And speaking of, it's also shoebox Operation Christmas Child time of the year. And so uh, there, there's a lot to do there. Uh, on November 8th, which is a Wednesday at 6.30, we'll have our shoebox packing party which is always a great time. And I'd love whoever can be here on that Wednesday night, be here because uh, the more the merrier. And so what we do is we build shoe boxes until all the stuff we've collected over the year uh, goes into shoe boxes. And sometimes we have to run out to Dollar General and, and get a few things, of course, uh, to make all the shoe boxes uh, a good shoe box. But uh, it's a lot of fun. We'll have some snacks and things like that. You go, well, that's right in the middle of my dinner time. Well, come on. We'll get you fed a little bit. We'll make sure there's something to eat and, and fun to be had. And shoe boxes. Uh, the kids were working on folding shoe boxes this morning. And uh, they're also going to work a little bit during church on um, some bracelets and things uh, for the shoe boxes. So, so we have lots of nice things to put in our shoe boxes at our shoe box packing party. That being said, in lieu of if you're not going to build shoe boxes at home, you're welcome to do that too. We always do that. We come to the packing party and we pack shoe boxes. Uh, if you want to bring items for the shoe box packing party, if you just want to uh, buy things and, and bring them in and put them in there, uh, down there uh, in the closet so we have more to do, more to make, for our shoebox packing party, that's great. You can do that if that if that suits you better. So however you want to do it, we just need things, uh, products to go in the shoeboxes so we can make as many. And typically we make 70, 80, sometimes 90 of our shoeboxes at the shoebox packing party, which is a big part of how many we, we send uh, off around the world. And then on November 12th, will be a Sunday, and that'll be our shoebox dedication service. So uh, make sure you have those on your calendar. Uh, also, coming up November 17th, uh, Josh and I are going to be here at church. We're going to do a servant concert. We'd love for you to be here. We're going to praise. We're going to worship. We're going to have a good time. Same thing. We'll probably have a little fellowship downstairs before we come up here and and have some music and praise and worship. Would love for you to be here. Would love for you to join us uh, for that on the 17th. Uh, any other announcements or questions or comments? We are packing backpacks Wednesday night. So far, Nick and I are on the list. If anybody wants to join us, we'll be there. Greensburg Methodist Church, 6 o'clock. Six o'clock, and you're usually done by about six thirty. Exactly. Takes about a half hour. Okay. Well, there, you, there you go. Just like that. More help. More help. Anything else? Any other announcements? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of coming into your house, sharing our, our worship and our thanks, our gratitude to you, Father God. Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful place that you've given us, this beautiful, beautiful area of the country that we get to live in and come and worship you. Father God, Lord Jesus, be with all those who couldn't make it today for one reason or another. But Lord Jesus, just bless us. Bless those watching online. Bless us here, Father God. You're a big, good God. Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful. Bless our time. And Lord Jesus, we pray that what we bring to you today is a, as a gift is pleasing to 
to you, that you're blessed by us, Lord Jesus, as we sing to you and we pray to you. Father God, we share in your word together. Lord, you're so good. You're so amazing. We love you so much. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.
God is so good to us. He's such a good God. Good, loving God. Do we have uh, praises, prayer concerns, updates this fine October morning, Miss Midge? I have a blessing and a sadness, but uh, my, my son-in-law's been released. He can uh, lift the baby. But that means we don't go down there three nights a week and I give her a bath and I put her in a bed. I'm going to miss that so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and may have to go anyway. May know. have to go anyway. That's what we grandparents do, right? It's such a sweet time. It is a sweet time. I know we're watching, Rose watches our grandson William during the week, uh, several days a week. And um, so a couple of weeks ago on Wednesdays, he started going to the other grandmothers and we're like, but, 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 <laughs> yes, they're just so sweet and little. We just, we just miss him. We miss him. We've gotten so attached. We're attached to all of them, but that precious time with them is so good. So praises and, and prayers for Mitch and George. <laughs> Any other praises, prayer concerns, Miss Kathy? told me that everything was good, that he couldn't say there was zero chance of anything ever happening again, I mean, but it was pretty close. Good. All right. And that well, we'll trust I for didn't that. I have to come back or anymore, Stan, and like on one of the things, he said that he won't feel comfortable, then he'll put you down for five years. So I've gone from six months of angiogram, a year of angiogram, two years of angiogram, Two years in MRA, three years in MRA, and now I'm five. And that's not even required. So praise the Lord. All we can say is praise the Lord. I remember going to the hospital, and I'm sure Aaron, you know, her I and Allison sat in the uh, upstairs garden up there, just praying over you. And God said, "Okay, let's do this thing." Uh, so, and he's been glorified by it ever since. And we're just so thankful you're with us. And what a great report. Love that. Praise the Lord. Anything else this morning? I have a co-worker I, uh, I need to tell you about. Uh, her name is Rhonda. And she had, she had bad eye trouble her adult life. And she had a corneal replacement this past Tuesday. And uh, she texted me yesterday saying she wasn't going to be able to be back tomorrow. She was supposed to come back to work tomorrow, but she has high pressure in that eye. And they're trying different things to get that taken care of. So if you please uh, keep Miss Rhonda in your prayers. And then I have another co-worker, Miss Patricia, that was supposed to have hip surgery on Wednesday. And for the fourth time, her surgeon said, she called and the surgeon's office said, we can't do it. We can't do it until December or January. So she's in a tremendous amount of pain. And so if you'd keep Rhonda and Miss Patricia in your prayers, I'd greatly appreciate that. 
Bob. Uh, I have an uh, old friend, co-worker, uh, who called me this week, and he told me he had stage five kidney cancer. Mm. And, uh, uh, Buddy Bevins is his name. Buddy Bevins. Hadn't been for Buddy in his friendship early in my career at this where I worked at, uh, I wouldn't have the final end of his career in retirement. He's losing out on getting rehired. Mm. So keep Buddy and his family. Miss Lynn? Awesome. So Lynn's Market, Lynn's, Lynn's Farmer's Market will be open after after church today. So if you need broccoli, broccoli, cauliflower, or... And cabbage. And cabbage. Oh, we were talking about cabbage. So Miss Rose may, may have to wrestle somebody for a head of cabbage. We were talking about cabbage this week. And there's nothing better than cooked cabbage and cornbread. Yeah. And, if, and out of the garden, yeah. cabbage is so much better than store-bought. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, you, you know everybody on our prayer list. You already know, Father God, but we get together as prayer warriors. We put our armor on. We bow our heads and we go to prayer, Father God, Lord Jesus. You know. You're with us. But Father God, Lord Jesus, we lift up Buddy's family to you uh, with a stage five kidney cancer. And Lord Jesus, we just pray you be all over that. Be with him, be with his family, doctors, everybody involved, Father God, that we will just see. We just see healing and help and comfort. We see it all the time. Miraculous things like Miss Kathy. We just praise you, Father God, for your, the healing that you did in her, in Miss Pam. Miraculous healing, Father God. Little dear Nora, we're just talking with some friends yesterday. You performed a miracle. We see it, we see it all the time. You're a healing God. You're a helping God. You're the real thing. You are worthy to be glorified because of what you do in our lives, Lord Jesus. It's not always easy, but Father God, you're always with us. We love you so very much. You're so good. Lord Jesus, be with each and every person on our prayer list. Be with Miss Rhonda and Miss Patricia, Father God, as they go through and they continue to go through what they're going through. Lord Jesus, just help them. Help them. Give them comfort. Give them peace, Lord Jesus. We just pray your healing hand all over them, Lord Jesus. Help us to pray for them. Help us to be there with them, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just see you do miraculous things all the time. Lord Jesus, we need to tell somebody. We need to tell people <coughs> you are a miraculous healing God. And Lord Jesus, we just love you and we praise you. Father God, you're so good. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for grandbabies. We love our grandbabies, and we're just so thankful we get to see them and love them. Lord Jesus, just be with all of us. Help us all, Father God, just to carry your banner wherever we go, to tell people and show people your love wherever we go and whatever we do. Help us to be strong in our faith, bold and courageous and strong. Lord, we thank you and praise you in this wonderful day, in your wonderful glorious, powerful, amazing name we pray. Amen. Our uh, hymn this morning, our communion hymn is number 303, Nearer My God to Thee. Let's sing this great song before we have our time with the Lord in communion.
Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to gather here today to, to worship you and to, to give thanks and to, to uh, just uh, to remember Jesus and the, the sacrifice that he made on our, our behalf. Be with all those on our prayers and concerns list and, and lift up all those uh, uh, to you and, and give them strength. In your name we pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, as we give back to you, I just feel heavy on my heart to pray for, like David said, and Beth, everyone on our prayer list, but especially Beth today and Richie. Lord God, I pray that we know a miracle there. I pray over Richie. I pray for Ernie and all those who aren't with us today. And Father God, I pray for all of our family members who are sitting on the fence and not accepting you, Lord. I just lift them up to you, Father God. And as we give our gifts, we just praise you and thank you for your gift. In your name I pray, Jesus. Last week we we I can't say wrapped up because we never wrap up talking about just Jesus, but we had uh, four weeks of talking about just Jesus, and we just focused on his divine nature, his human nature, fully God and fully man, and how incredible that was. And then we talked about uh, one Sunday we talked about his works, his life on earth, the things that he did while he was with us. And then we wrap that up last week by talking about Jesus' role now as he sits by the Father, having dominion over the whole world, over the church, over us, over the influx and the filling of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. Oh, what a great uh, series that was in talking about Jesus. Today we're going to talk about something the same but completely different, okay? So what we're talking about today is what are you looking for in a church? And maybe this is for you and maybe it's for somebody watching or listening on Facebook or YouTube or what, whatever uh, way they end up hearing this. What are we looking for in a church and the first thing I want to say is this. The church is filled with God's called out people. It's filled with God's called out people. What exactly does that mean? That means God has called us out of our lives from outside his church. And I want to say that too. Sulfur Christian Church is not a church. It is part of the church. It doesn't matter what name's on the front of the building. It doesn't matter if you meet in a barn. It doesn't matter if you meet in a house. It doesn't matter if you, you, you meet at McDonald's over coffee and have church in the morning. You're talking about Jesus and you're talking about the lost and the unsaved. We are part of the church. We are the church, and we are God's called out people. That means if you read your Bible very carefully and you study it, you will see that the Bible tells us that we are a people called to action. We are not consumers. We are not here to be entertained we're not here to really to not even to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. So I want us to start out in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 is where we're going to start out today. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. And this says a lot right here. This little passage says so much. And so Paul... Paul is preaching to the Gentiles 
you know, basically preaching to the non-Jews uh, of where he's at. Uh, the people in Ephesus uh, need to hear this. He knows this. And so here we go. This is Paul talking to the people in Ephesus. Verse, beginning with verse seven. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I'm less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. Now listen to this in verse 10. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. So what is the church? Well, in a nutshell, Paul just told us that through Jesus Christ, through our faith in him, through what we've been taught, through the mysteries of God revealed through the life of Jesus, through his salvation, through his redemption, that we, we, the church, need to let everybody know. And not just people either. Did you catch that? He said the rulers in the heavenly realms. You know, we need to be so bold that we say, Satan, get behind me. Get behind me. You have no authority in my house. You have no authority in my life. You have no authority here. Go away. We need to live in freedom and confidence, just like Paul said here in Ephesians. We need to be confident, not in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ, who put a part of himself in us so that we can face anything because he's always with us, always. So I want you to ask yourself a question. And this, is, this question is for those of us right here, and it's also for anybody watching online it's, that's watching this. Maybe you're watching it live, maybe you're home, maybe you're in your car, watching on your phone, watching on your TV, whatever method by which you are consuming this or watching this or taking this in or, or hopefully you're part of worshiping with us today. I hope that and pray for that all the time is that this medium is used, that God's so big that he can use this for his goodness, for his kingdom, for through mercy and his works of salvation. You know, I've thought many times about ending this, not doing this online thing. But I thought, then I'm pigeonholing God. I'm thinking that's not, he's not powerful enough to use this, but he is. And I know because I've seen it. I've heard it. I've witnessed it. But I want you all, including who's watching, whenever you're watching, maybe you're not watching live, maybe you're watching a year from now, I don't know, but that's the mighty God that we serve. How he works is uh, incredible. Question for you is, what are you looking for in a church? What are you looking for in church? Some folks are looking for a church that makes them feel good about themselves. Let's just be honest. I'm gonna say some honest things today, okay? It may not set well with everybody, but that's okay. I can, I'm okay with that. I will not tell you anything that's not true. Some people, when they're looking for a church, they're looking for a church that makes them feel good about themselves. Others are looking for a church that has a lot of programming to keep them busy, to keep their 
kids busy, and doing good things. Many people these days are looking for a church that has everything, all the bells and whistles. Some people are looking for that. Some people are looking for that in a church. Some uh, are looking for great music, Bible studies, small groups, tons of kids and tons of kids stuff, missions, a lot of variety. Some folks even intentionally, I know this to be true because I've been <laughs> had this told to me right to my face. Some people intentionally look for a church that they can blend in to and be anonymous if they want to be. But they say, oh yeah, I go to XYZ church. Oh, you do? I've never seen you there. Oh. So watch your checklist. What is your checklist? So many people that I encounter talk about why they attend a specific church. Why, why do you go to this church? And I'm telling you right now, when people find out I'm a pastor and they meet me and they start talking to me, they want to tell me why they go to the church they go to. You know, I don't know if they think I'm going to, going to try to recruit them or, or try to get them to leave their church and come here. That's not true. You, you all know me better than that. I'm happy wherever you go to church, and, and that's between you and the Lord, how, how you worship him, as long as it's in truth and spirit like the Bible asks us to. What's on your checklist? But a lot of people go to a, a church uh, and they tell me a lot of the things that I mentioned just a minute ago. You know, oh, you should hear our worship team. You should see our worship team. Oh, our kids' ministry is massive. It's incredible and they're so good. 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 I'm glad. I'm glad for that. And I'm not saying that all the things that I just mentioned are bad, not at all. I'm not saying that. But the church that people most go, most likely go to meets their expectations. They can check off at least a good part of their list of what they're looking for. It, it meets their specific wants, their needs and desires. Now, I do want to preface this by saying that I'm not, I'm not claiming that all these things on your checklist or these checklists are wrong. I'm not saying that. But shouldn't we? Shouldn't we measure our worship by biblical standards, by God's word? Isn't that how we should measure our standards and not just cultural or personal standards? So that's always been a slippery slope with the church. Personal gain, personal standards, cultural things. Well, we need, we need to do this to reach more people. Well, if we can get them in the door, if we do this and we can get people in the door, then we, maybe we can keep them with the other stuff that we do. I've been there. I've, I've seen it. I've experienced it myself. And maybe you have too. But shouldn't we measure our worship and where we worship by biblical standards? So I want to start now by taking a look at what the Bible says was the definition of church. And you all know me. I love my definitions, right? So here we go. The church is a local, a local group of believers you know, the church started out as home churches primarily, and so it was people that lived in the same area who gathered together, right? I think a big part of that was they could then impact the other people around them. So I think when we are looking for a church, a biblical church, it is a church that is more like a family, and less like a gathering of strangers. I, if, um, I think I'm reading the Bible right when, we, when it comes to this. The church is a local group of believers. In Acts 2, 1 through 4, you, I know you know this, but listen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together. All together. They were all together in one place. 
They were all together in one place, it says. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. What does church look like? It looks like a local group of believers who gather together that are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what church looks like. That's what it is. Something special happens. I'm telling you. And those of you who have been in church, you're a, a long part of your lives can, can, can attest to this. You know, big churches, small churches, medium churches, all different kinds of churches. When the people of God gather together in his name and for his purpose, special things happen. Mm -hmm. Special things happen. Even in a group our size, we see miracles. We see opportunities where God takes what little we have and he blows it up just like he did the fishes and the loaves. And we are able to impact our community. We are able to help our families. We are able to help our friends more than we could ever do on our own. That is a big reason why I think Jesus wants us to gather together because together we're stronger. Together we can make more impact. We can pull our resources together and help more people and impact our friends, our family, our neighbor, everyone around us more together than we can separately. And that's just the truth. That's the truth of why God has a church. And listen, if we believe, as we claim we do, then we're all filled with the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit should empower, enable us to do and say things that are beyond our human, normal human uh, abilities. It, in, if I'm not mistaken, a really, really great guy said, you will do even greater things than I have done. Okay, start, if you start a checklist, start a checklist of raise people from the dead, heal people of incurable, quote, incurable diseases, raise himself from the dead, saved a sinner like me, but he says, of all these things I've done, I fed the 5,000. I, I healed the hemorrhaging woman. I forgave and healed the woman at the well. I raised the centurion's child. I raised Lazarus from the dead. I healed, I helped lepers, all kinds of things. And yet he looks us in the eye and he says, you will do even greater things than me. Not on your own. I'm going to help you. Listen. We have power that we can call up on from God and it can change the world around us. But we have to let it change us first. I want to look at a passage in Matthew 16. We need to take a look at at this, and again, this is relative to us as the church. Matthew 16 that we need to look at, it's verses 17 and 18 of Matthew 16. Listen to this. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, will not prevail against it. Okay, anybody ever been told that this means Peter? 
Anybody ever been told that? That the rock, Peter is the rock the church is built on? I've been told that. I've heard that. Have you heard that? That Jesus is telling Peter that he's the rock that the church is going to be built on? I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I don't agree. What I agree with is that, who do we call the rock? Christ. Jesus. This passage is about Jesus. Jesus. He says, I am the rock, is what he's saying. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He is the rock. Jesus is the rock, not Peter. Peter's great. Peter was a disciple. Peter was all mouth and goofy like some of us are. Spontaneous. And a lot of times he opened foot, open mouth and inserted foot. That was Peter. But Peter was not the rock the church was built on. The rock that the church is built on is Jesus. And it's the only He's the only thing that it could be built on. None of, none of the rest of us could do it. Jesus talking about himself, that he is the rock that the church was going to be built on and that the gates of hell could not prevail against him. The church has not been built upon music or programs or kids stuff or church parties, or picnics, or great preachers, or money, or fame, or popularity, or however many people are in their church. The church is built upon and only upon Jesus, the rock. Amen. Amen. So now there's something else, one more thing that I want us to look at today and consider about what we look for in a church and we'll start this conversation today and maybe we'll finish this next Sunday. So we've talked a little bit and I, we could go on. I could have done a whole series about what are we looking for in a church, but I felt like God just wanted that to be the tip of the iceberg because we've talked a little bit today seriously about what is the church? What are we looking for in a church, in the church but there's something else I want to talk about and consider today. What is the church looking for in us? And if Jesus is the rock on which the, our church is built on, the church is built on, then what's expected of us? What's the ch church looking for in us? This is 1 Corinthians 10, 31 through 33. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 through 33. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews or Greeks or the church, the church of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble. Even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I'm not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. What does Jesus, the rock of our church, expect from us? I think this is what he expects from us. I think this is what the church needs from us. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether a Jew or a Greek or anyone else in the church of God, even as you try to please everyone in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. What is expected of us? That is... That's what's expected of us. So with that being said, we just read the Bible, what the Bible says here. So how much 
is going to church part of your personal checklist? How much is it about doing for others and reaching the lost and unsaved? They're hard questions sometimes. It's hard questions to ask ourselves. But you know, I truly believe that we as believers need to have more of a sense of urgency about and for the lost and unsaved because time is only so long. And I'm not just talking about Jesus coming back. I'm talking about how long we are on this planet, our own personal lives. How long do we have? You know, young man, young actor, uh, Matthew uh, Perry, right? Is that his name? I thought I would remember it just like that. 54 years old and drowned yesterday. Drowned. Drowned in a hot tub. So I, I'm sure they'll do, do an autopsy and find found out what happened there. Do you think he woke up yesterday morning thinking, well... This is my last day. How am I going to spend it? I think I'll go get in the hot tub. Who wakes up thinking, well, this is my last day? I love that old Tim McGraw song, Live Like You're Dying. I love that song. Do we need to have more of a sense of urgency about the lost and the unsaved around us? I think for sure, I think for sure we need to have more of a sense of urgency. So how much of your church checklist is about you? How much is it about doing for others and reaching the lost and unsaved? How much of it is about convenience and comfort, routine? It's hard questions. It's hard questions for us to ask, but I think we are at a time in history where we need to ask those kind of questions. I think we really, really do. What am I asking all of us to do is quite simple. For us all to ask ourselves, why are we here? Why do we get up, get cleaned up, get our kids cleaned up, put her clothes on, put her nice clothes on for church and we come and we are here. Why? Why? Why do we do it? What is the purpose? Am I going to church or am I being the church? Do I participate in the church? Do I participate in the accomplishments of his kingdom or am I simply an observer? Do I consume in order to make myself feel better or do I actively seek opportunities to make a difference in the life of this church and the people that you encounter here? These are real questions that the modern, today's Christian needs to ask themselves. Are we making a difference? And if not, why? It's not very comfortable. It's not much fun. It's not very entertaining. I know it's not. But the circumstances are urgent. <coughs> Being saved or unsaved, being unsaved is an emergency. The lost are dying and they have no chance without Jesus. So what do we do? What do we do? 1 Corinthians 10 31 through 33. We just read this a few minutes ago. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. People need to see us 
And for first time maybe in their lives, they need to understand why we do this, why we get up, why we come here week after week. Why? Is it worth it? We need to make sure that we actively seek opportunities to make a difference in the life of his church and the people that you encounter here and everywhere. People need to see and hear Jesus through us and in us. They do. We're in an emergency situation. It's an emergency. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, it is a crisis that so many people are so deceived and feel so secure without salvation from you. Father God, Lord Jesus, help us in this critical time in human history to show that you are a healing God. You're a helping God. You are a difference maker and that you've done miraculous things in our lives, that you've saved even sinners like us. Lord Jesus, Father God, what are we looking for in a church? We're looking for 1 Corinthians 10, 31 through 33 kind of people. We're looking for the kind of people that you talked about to the woman at the well. Those who will worship wherever they're at, not just in the temple, not just in Jerusalem, not just on the mountain, but that we will worship in truth and spirit wherever we are and whatever we're doing, all for the glory of God, even when we're eating, even when we're drinking, even when we're working, even when we're playing, that we do it all for the glory of God and that we will see and try our best to show you to people so that they may be saved. Lord Jesus, it, it's an emergency. And everybody in this room is an emergency room doctor. Father God, we praise you. We thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. You are so glorious. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you. Father God, for all that you do, you are so amazing. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our closing today, I love to tell the story. It's number 190 in your hymnal. And this, this little hymn says so much, so much about what we talked about, what the church should look and sound like. It's a great, great song to kind of wrap this up and bring it home for us. Let's sing this great, great song of our faith. Tell the story
that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, twill be my name in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Dear Heavenly Father, we Help us to go tell the old, old story about your love to people, Father God. And just like this song said, we assume everybody knows that there are people we know who have never heard it. Father God, help us to be the ones. Give us the courage. Help us to be brave when we're out and about and we're dealing with people day in and day out. Lord Jesus, just to show you to glorify you in all that we do. Lord Jesus, help us to work on being the church, not just coming to a church. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you for all things. You're so good and amazing. In your precious name we pray, amen. God bless, thank you all. God bless you. So good to see you all and I'll see you real soon.